Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. It's the first Thursday of the month, month, which means we're in the kitchen with Across the Fence. I'm joined by our chefs, Carolyn Peake from Williamstown and of course, Lynn Jarvis from South Hero. And today is a theme that many of you have asked for, quick and easy recipes. We want to extend a special thanks to those of you who sent us some of your favorites. And Carolyn, I believe you're going to begin. Yes, I am. And this is not a viewer one. This is one of my own. But this is chicken and stuffing. And Again, there's my crock pot, <laughs> gotta have that. And this one is really good if you have a lot of leftover you know, chicken or turkey, if you've had some for the holidays. And it's very easy because you have a layer of stuffing on the bottom and then a layer of the chicken, another layer of stuffing and a layer of the chicken. And I think you, you might wanna save some of the stuffing to put on the very top afterwards, but it's, you know, this works. Look and at that. Ooh. Yeah, you can see. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good to me. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought too. I think you're hungry, Carolyn. <laughs> I think I am too. That's a good serving. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, you know, it's one of those that you can either make a stuffing. The recipe that I have does have the stuffing mm -hmm. recipe for it. Um, then you just put it in the cooker for four and, four and a half to five hours on low and Perfect. Ta-da, there it is. Well, my quick and easy recipe was sent in by Sandra Lovejoy from Mooresville. It's an, her impossible custard coconut pie, and she should call it very possible because oh, yeah. it's so easy. You just take coconut, sugar, bisquick mix, um, some butter, milk, vanilla, and four eggs, and you just mix that all together. You put it in your pie dish, and you cook that, mm -hmm. and that's easy. Couldn't be easier. How does it taste? It's good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> it's very good. <laughs> Well, I have a cherry pudding here, and I got this recipe from Celia Hackett up in South Hero. And the recipe base dates back to 1935, Judy. It's older than I am. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Celia knows I'm a big fan of cherries, and this came from a family cookbook. And it's easy to make in three easy steps. First, you cream some butter and sugar. Then you add the sifted flour, baking powder, and milk. Then you put that into your baking dish, and over that you put your cherries and cook them until they sort of rise to the top. And I'm going to take some out so you can see what it looks like. It's a little bit like a pudding cake, but as you will see, it's not as moist as a pudding cake. But I think, Judy, if you add some of that whipped cream, it'll make it just perfect. So that'll finish it off. And okay. while you're doing that, I should say that I made this uh, Sunday up at the Anchorage for our regular potluck gets togethers. And this had six thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not easy to do. <laughs> well, it's a great. We have three desserts to start, start the show. That's wonderful. And we know that our viewer recipes are going to be delicious and they're, they're family favorites. And with that in mind, our quick and easy recipe collection will include an additional six viewer recipes that we won't have time to present today. While Carolyn and Lynn get ready to show some more recipes, we're going to take a minute to thank some of our loyal viewers. We begin with Barbara Toll, who is from Essex Junction, from across the border in Sutton, Quebec, we want to thank Jean Whitford. We also want to recognize Sheila Taylor Lee from Fairhaven, Hoopy Lanfear of Morrisville, Ginneth Fortin from Sheldon Springs, and Lenora Thompson over in East Callis. Those are just a few of our thousands of loyal viewers, and we thank each of you for making time in your day to include Across the Fence. I'll be back in just a bit to let you know how you can get all these recipes, but now it's uh, Carolyn's turn to finish with her recipes. Okay, and I am gonna swipe a piece of that pie because <laughs> I love coconut pie. Well, we've got part of the dinner started here, and my next recipe is a called butter rolls, but they're not uh, the type, kind of rolls that takes, you know, an hour or two to rise or anything like that. These are made with a baking mix, and it just takes two cups of the baking mix, uh, one eight ounce carton of sour cream, and a stick of butter melted. And they, they almost taste like a yeast roll, but you see they're nice and 
nice and, and dense inside and really very good. So really something that you could mix up in a hurry and have for your meal to go either with your chicken dish or whatever you like to do. My next one is another chicken dish and it's very similar to the first one only this one is cooked in the oven. And this is a five ingredient poultry casserole from Mary Harris of Wolcott. And I'm wondering if this Mary Harris is one that I have known from many years back. But so if you if you are the one just you know drop us a line and let me know I'm curious but this is is very simple because it takes two cans of cream of chicken soup and I'll put some out here on the on the plate uh, two cups of cut up poultry of some sort some celery some mayonnaise and then a package of herb stuffing mix and the stuffing goes on top you've mixed everything else together put this on top put it in the oven for half an hour and you've got a really nice casserole that's using up your extra uh, turkey or chicken from whether it's a holiday or you just pull it out whichever works for you my next recipe comes from Carol Now from Monroe, New Hampshire, and she says this is a nice treat for winter days. It is an easy fruit salad, and it is easy. It has pineapple chunks, sliced peaches, mandarin oranges, fruit cocktail. You mix those all together after you've drained them, and you save a little bit of the juice, or you save the juice and take a little bit of it to go mixed with a box of of uh, pudding mix. Then you put everything all together, stir it all together, put it in the refrigerator. It's great for breakfast, it's great for a side dish with your meal, uh, it could be a good dessert, whatever you like to do with it. And so I just thought that was really a simple, nice and simple fruit dish. And, and in the winter, I don't know about you, but I'm always looking for something that's a little more spring or summer like. My last recipe comes from Catherine Marshall of Waterbury and she says that no one who tastes these believe that they are a low-cal dessert and they are called graham cracker brownies. And I wasn't too sure when I first looked at the recipe and I said you know that is different. It takes two cups of graham crackers, some walnuts, some chocolate chips, sugar, salt, milk, and then if you want you can put some confectioner sugar over the top when they're all cooked. And it's really very good and it's made with graham crackers. So if you want to try something a little different, that's a that's a good you know, like I say, it's it's a little. You're, you look like you're wanting to grab one here. Uh, when I saw this recipe, I was the same as you. What's this going to taste like? Yeah, and they taste good, don't they? Mmm. <laughs> they taste like more to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All they need is some marshmallows, and then they'd be s'mores. So are <laughs> you uh, really want getting s'more. a lot of viewers stopping in the store oh, these days? Oh yes, all the time, good, and good. I I love it. I love to meet those folks that are out there watching us. Well, they keep us cooking. They do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Carolyn. You're welcome. We all like quick and easy recipes, um, no matter what time of year it is, and I'm going to start with a recipe that I got in Mexico because I go down there and visit people that actually make this. It's my chicken tortilla soup. And here it is, I've adapted the recipe so that it's quick and easy for you to make. Now in the recipe, as you can see, there's some uh, onion, there's garlic, tomato and spices and the broth and you boil this in a big kettle. And when it's um, uh, all the flavors of mixed and match. You add some more ch your chicken and the cornstarch and cook it to the thickness that you like. And just before serving, you want to put in your shredded cheese, and I'll put some on top, like this. And then, oh, doesn't that look good? And then your tortilla chips, and usually we would do this in the individual bowls, but since we're not going to do individual bowls, I did it in the main bowl today. So there you go. Quick and easy chicken tortilla soup. And I hope you'll give this a try. Now we're going to move on to a, another southern type recipe. 
it's this key lime bread. Now it's easy to make. First you cream your eggs, sugar, butter, add your flour mixture, and then add some lime juice and the zest or the peel of the lime, along with some walnuts. Bake at 350 for about an hour. And when um, the bread is cooled, you make a glaze of confectionery sugar and lime juice. And when that lime juice, the tang of the lime and the sweet of the sugar and um, the crunch of the walnuts, um, it's going to be a real pleasure for your palate. And I'm still having some of Carolyn's <laughs> brownie here in my palate. But anyway, it's a delicious recipe and more good news, it makes two loaves so that you can give one to someone that you've wanted to do something nice for a long, long time. Quick, easy uh, key lime bread. Now with maple season almost upon us, how about this maple cranberry chicken? It's so easy to make because all you do is while the chicken is cooking, you baste it with your maple syrup and your cranberry sauce and cook it. That's all there is to it, just three ingredients. And then you put it on the platter like you see here. Just before serving, add a little more cranberry sauce around the sides and this is so good. I had it for uh, lunch yesterday because there were three or four pieces of chicken that I didn't use for the recipe. I hope you'll give this a try because I know you're going to enjoy it very, very much. Now I'm going to go to another southern dish. I guess I'm getting tired of winter with the uh, southern recipes I'm taking out today. This is my quick and easy shrimp creole. Um, easy to make right here with some um, your shrimp of course, chopped green peppers, onion and garlic and the secret ingredient is tomato soup and spices. You can make this as spicy hot as you like or keep it very mild. I keep it more in the mild temperature. Um, once it's all cooked, serve it over rice. We've got some rice here on our plate and along with a fresh green salad, you have a very tasty delicious meal that's low in calories and I know you're going to enjoy this. Now this next recipe I couldn't resist even though it is a little more difficult than the ones I've already showed you. It's my cheeseburger muffins and here they are. Um, they're a little bit more difficult than the ones I've already showed you but at any rate it's worth the effort because you're uh, family and your grandchildren or the kids especially think you've just gone down to McDonald's or the Burger King. First you cook your beef and onions, add your flour mixture, then some ketchup, mustard, eggs and butter, fold in shredded cheese, bake it 425 for 25 minutes and it makes five dozens of, of these small muffins or two dozen of the large muffins and they freeze beautifully and what I like to do is put a couple in the freezer or whatever are left over and serve them with a green salad. It makes a very delicious meal and you can make it in no time. Now I have a, a little uh, a second or two left to mention a couple of you viewers. Carol and I uh, mentioned before how much we enjoy uh, seeing you people when we're out and about but a couple people I'd like to mention are Marilyn Fuller from Newberry and she was for 30 years the coordinator of the Vermont 4-H building down at the Eastern States Exposition. She just retired and I remember all the good times we had with her down there. And from St. Johnsbury, a uh, lady named Dot Pearson for 37 years she was the dorm mother for the 4-H building, Vermont 4-H building at the Big E. Now her daughter has taken her place and she says the Strong Americans 4-H uh, group from South Hero are one of her favorites and that um, I remember uh, those strong Americans well they were often here on across the fence. And my last is, uh, recipe right here is a winter shortcake. Take a look at it. It's easy because it's made with a biscuit base for the cake and then you make a topping and that's made with cranberries, crushed pineapple and a chopped apple and that sweet tangy of the cranberry pineapple and the chopped apples will set your taste buds a twitter and it's helped me get rid of the winter blues because just look at that how can you go wrong when you have a nice dessert like that but we don't have any winter blues here today Judy because we're all going to enjoy this <laughs> nothing, wrong with the, nothing wrong with this day <laughs> yeah <laughs> that looks terrific thanks
Yeah, wonderful job. I can't wait to try one of your muffins, though. That's very intriguing to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, of course, there are a couple of different ways that you can get the recipes that we see today, plus some additional viewer recipes that we didn't have time to show you this afternoon. To get the recipes online, go to Across the Fence website at uvm.edu slash extension and click on the link to Across the Fence. You'll find the recipes on the left-hand side of the web page. To get the recipes by mail, send $2 and a stamped, self-addressed business size envelope to Quick and Easy Recipes, Box 108, South Hero, Vermont, 05486. And remember, if you're ordering the recipes to include $2 and a stamped, self-addressed envelope, again, that address is Quick and Easy Recipes, Box 108 in South Hero, and the zip code is 05486. And if you're paying by check, please make it payable to Lynn Jarvis. Our thanks to both Lynn and Carolyn, of course, for making these delicious recipes. Thank we'll, you. we'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.